All right. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord for this day. It is a beautiful day. It is the day that God has made. He made it for you, for me, for us. And you know what we do? <laughs> we do it every day. We do it every day, just like Brother Bowens. The same thing every day. We do the same thing every day. We give God the praise because God is good all the time. Yes, it's true. Not everything that happens in our lives is good. But guess what? We have a good God that we can pray to, that we can go to with our problems. And he is an ever-present help in the time of trouble. And that's why we have to give him the praise. In the good times, we praise him. In the bad times, we praise him. In the in-between time, we praise him. We just give God praise because that's what we do every day. Father, we thank you that you are the same yesterday, today, and forever ever the same god who parted the red sea the same god who was able to um part the jordan river for the israelites to cross over to the promised land god you are the same god who allowed david to kill a giant with just one little stone. You are the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so we know, God, that you are more than able to be to us a rock, a strong tower, the place where we can run to and hide, and we know that we will be safe. So we thank you, God, for being our rock, our shelter, and our hiding place. Be with us now in this time together is a prayer. We pray in Jesus' name with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Listen, yesterday we looked at the priest Zechariah. Zechariah had become stuck. Yeah, he was stuck in the past. He and his wife Elizabeth were righteous, God-fearing people who loved the Lord and tried to the best of their ability to live right according to God's law. And guess what? God himself affirmed that they were living excellent lives, just like God affirmed that Job was righteous and bragged to Satan about how righteous Job was and that there was none like him. And possibly God was likewise bragging about Zechariah and Elizabeth, even though they were enduring this difficult situation, barrenness. Listen, I believe God was still bragging. See, even though they're going through a difficult time, they are still loving me and serving me because they continued to serve God. They prayed and believed. They believed and prayed for a miracle. The years came and went and nothing happened. Elizabeth did not conceive. And now both of them were old. And Zechariah was stuck. Yep, he was stuck, stuck in the past. And listen, his problem was he could not make sense of his past. Why is he loving and serving the Lord? And yet the Lord is not answering, has not answered their prayer. And so he was stuck right there. So that when Gabriel, the angel of the Lord, came to him, with this astounding word from the Lord, he said to him, don't be afraid, Zechariah. God has heard your prayer. Listen, if God says he has heard your prayer, there's nothing else to do to say. God has heard your prayer. But the angel goes on, your wife Elizabeth will, will, not maybe, supposedly, hopefully, will give you a son. And not only a son, but this is what you are to name him. Name him John. 
you will have great joy and gladness. Listen, this was a message of fullness. God had come to make him full. He says, many will rejoice at his birth for he will be, listen, great in the eyes of the Lord. God has given him a son that is going to be great, not only recognized by the people as being great, but great in the eyes of the Lord. He must never touch wine, giving him instruction, never touch wine or other alcoholic drinks, for he is to be a lifelong Nazarite dedicated to God from the womb. He will, will, will be filled with the Holy Spirit even before his birth. Oh my goodness. And then he goes on to say, he will turn many Israelites to the Lord their God. He will be a man with the spirit and the power of Elijah. Mm -mm -mm. Your son will prepare the people, listen, for the coming of the Lord, for the Messiah. He will turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and he will cause those who are rebellious to accept the wisdom of the godly. Now, now, can I ask you, if God had given you a message like this <laughs> about a child that you would have, <laughs> what would your response be? Oh my goodness. This was an amazing answer to his prayer. He and his wife had been praying for so long. Not only now would they have a son, but their son would be a prophet proclaiming the coming of the promised Messiah to God's chosen people. Wow. Their long awaited answer to their prayer, listen, would be an extraordinary son who would be the forerunner of the long-awaited Messiah. Did you get that? The long-awaited answer to their prayer <laughs> would be the long-awaited Messiah that their son would announce as his forerunner. In other words, in other words, God had set them up. God set them up. You see, the difficulty of their past, the shame and embarrassment of barrenness was not a curse as some people understood it. No, the past was a setup to receive God's present. You, you get that, the present, uh, the play on words, not just the present, but God was giving them a present and the present was the gift of his fullness, fullness that they could not experience. Listen, if they already had many children, God wanted to fill their lives to the full, not just with a son, but with a son who would be, listen, the first prophet in Israel in 400 years, there were 400 years of silence where there was no prophet, there was no word from God. And now their son would be the first that God would send as his spokesperson to announce that his son is coming. A son they would have a son who would be used mightily by God, a son who everyone would know his name. Unlike all the other sons that were born during that time, that we have no idea who they were. We do not know the names of the shepherds who got the good news of the birth of the Christ child in Bethlehem. Mm -mm. We do not know the names of the Magi that came from the East with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. We, we do not know the names of the innkeeper who allowed Mary and Joseph to take refuge in the cave. We do not know the names of even the parents of Mary and Joseph. We don't know their names. But guess what? We know the name John the 
Baptist, the notable son and forerunner of this couple who had been barren in the past. But Zechariah, poor Zechariah, had trouble making sense of the past. And so when God sent the angel Gabriel with the news of his fullness, Zechariah could not believe. He could not receive the gift God was giving him. He could not believe. Imagine. He could not believe this righteous man could not believe that the same God who performed a miracle for Sarah <laughs> when she was 90 years of age and gave birth to a most notable son, Isaac. As a matter of fact, he was a descendant of Isaac. <laughs> if it wasn't for the miracle that God had given to Sarah, he and Elizabeth would not be there. There would be no nation of Israel. There wouldn't be any of that. And how did God do that? God did it by performing a miracle and giving her a son at the age of 90. Now, I don't know how old Elizabeth was, whether she was less than 90 or more than 90, but God had already performed that miracle. <laughs> it was not difficult for God to do simply because Elizabeth and Zechariah were old, but he was having problem believing that the same God who performed that miracle for Abraham and Sarah could give him and Elizabeth a son in their old age. So Zechariah, instead of shouting with joy and having a good old party right there in the holy place where he was burning incense, instead of shouting with joy, Zechariah said to the angel, how can I be sure this will happen. I'm an old man now, and my wife is also well along in years. Goodness gracious, are you kidding me, Zechariah? And so the angel's words were, uh, were words of rebuke. Since you didn't believe what I said, you will be silent and unable to speak until the child is born. For my words, listen, my words will certainly be fulfilled at the proper time. Listen, God's words do not fall to the ground. Whatever God says he is going to do in your life, God is going to do it. He is not a man. He cannot lie and his word will not, will not return to him void. And so Zechariah, because he was stuck in the past, now his voice was stuck. He could not speak. He could not praise God for the fullness he was about to receive. However, however, we see the opposite with Elizabeth. The text tells us, so it was as soon as the days of Zechariah's service in the temple were completed, he departed to his own house. After those days, his wife Elizabeth conceived and she hid herself five months saying, thus the Lord has dealt with me. Mm, hallelujah. She can speak. She had voice. She believed, has dealt with me to take away my reproach from among the people. She believed and she conceived. And then this is what she said when Mary visited her six months later. After Mary also got a message from the same angel Gabriel that she would conceive and bring forth the son of God. Now, Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste to a city of Judah and entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And it happened when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary that the baby leaped in her womb 
And Elizabeth, listen, was filled with the Holy Spirit. That's what the angel had said, that the baby would be filled with the Holy Spirit from the womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. And with that filling, with that filling, listen, fullness. Elizabeth was experiencing the fullness. Zechariah could not yet experience it because he did not believe, but not so with Elizabeth. Mm -mm, our Liz, mm -mm. she was experiencing the fullness of all that God had for her. Not only the fullness of her womb being filled, but she was also filled with the Holy Spirit. She was filled with joy. She was filled with praise. She was filled and able to speak. And then she proclaimed with a loud voice, blessed are you among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Listen, she knew, <laughs> she knew. How did she know? The spirit of God in her revealed to her. And so she spoke prophetically. She said, why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? You remember Joseph didn't believe Mary at first and you know, back and forth, he was going to try and put her away when she told him, you know, listen, uh, I'm conceived by the Holy Spirit and la, da, 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 da. And Joseph was like, ah, I don't know about that. But listen, Elizabeth didn't need to for Mary to tell her anything. She already knew. She already knew. Why is this granted to me that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For indeed, as soon as the voice of your greeting sounded in my ears, the baby leaped in my womb. Listen for joy. Zachariah couldn't experience the joy, but the baby, his son in the womb leaped for joy. And so this is what Elizabeth said. Blessed is she, meaning Mary, who believed for there will be a fulfillment of those things which were told her from the Lord. How did she know all of that? Because she was speaking prophetically from the spirit of the Lord. Elizabeth was the opposite of Zechariah. Elizabeth believed and she received the fullness that God had intended for her. And so our call to action on this Friday and for the entire weekend is the same as it was on yesterday. God's design is for your fullness. So simply believe God. Don't stay stuck in the past uh -huh, because things didn't work out in the past. Uh-uh, don't stay stuck. Simply believe God to fulfill his promise for fullness in your life in the fullness of time. Shalom, everybody. Shalom, Shalom. Dr. Daddy Reed. God bless everybody. Have a blessed day. Thank God you, Brother you. Ray. Have a good weekend, Kitty Perry. Love Thank you all. Thank, Thank you, Kitty. Blessings. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Dr. Denry. Ali and Roslyn, blessings. Thank, Thank you. you. Great letter. Yes, blessings on you. Blessings. Blessings, Dr. Denry. Thank you, Brother Kenny.